Hi everyone, we hope that you had a fun experience playing our murder mystery game, The Silent Sleuth. This murder mystery game is developed entirely using Kaizen, our product. And now that you have played a bit around the application and understood a little about how it works, we will now dive further into how exactly we built this Gen AI driven application using Kaizen. For the back-end logic of the game application, we utilized our robust Kaizen Workflow Designer, which enabled us to design and automate complex workflows effortlessly. And of course, a particularly exciting feature of our Workflow Designer is the integration of Generative AI. In this case, as you have seen and experienced in your gameplay session, it will be the game's workflow in generating the murder story plot each time dynamically. So even I myself, going through the game will also be my first time seeing the game plot. So during this demo now, I'll walk you through the design and functionality of the game and highlight how exactly Kaizen's workflow designer and our new Gen AI capabilities come together to create a seamless and engaging user experience for you. So what you see now on the screen here is the Kaizen Studio Console. Uh, we have some templates that we have here and of course the applications that we have built using our product Kaizen. So in this current studio console, let's now click on the workflow designer button of our Silent Sleuth application. Alright, now we'll navigate into the workflow that we have created and that we have used for our workflow. Over here, you can see the top left panel in our workflow designer contains the workflow elements to design our workflow based on business requirements. For the Kaizen workflow designer features, we first have service tasks, namely four types. Firstly, we have the AI task. Secondly, we have the JavaScript task. Thirdly, we have the JDBC task. And last but not least, HTTP task. On top of this, we also have user tasks as well for you to add in and configure any user-related workflows. We also have the gateways such as the parallel and exclusive gateways that we support. So you can see how there are different types of tasks that we have built here for different purposes. And all of these can be simply done and built for your business logic through drag and drop. Alright, now moving on to the workflow itself. You can see firstly we have the start note here on the left. This start note here denotes the starting of our workflow. And then the first task that we see here is the generate story AI task as you can see from the symbol on the top left corner of your task. So as you have seen in your gameplay earlier, we started off with the generation of our story plot. And this is represented by an AI task to generate the story in our workflow. For each task, you can see also on the right side, there are a set of properties for you to configure. And of course, it will differ depending on which task it is. So now you can see in the case of an AI task, we have a couple of uh, settings here. First, we have the AI provider. So you can set the AI provider. In this case, we have set it to AWS Bedrock. But of course, it can be set to other AI providers that you require, such as OpenAI. And then the next part, which is the major part of our AI task, it will be our AI prompt. So as for the prompt, in this case, we have engineered it in such a way that it provides us with the information in a very structured manner. For example, you can see over here, we asked Gen AI to give us the exact output format that we want, in this case, a JSON format. So this is actually one of the prompt engineering strategies to use a template and structure the result that we want to get from Gen AI so that it will be more consistent and more precise. We also have prompt variable mappings below if you take a look when we scroll down. What this does is that we are actually using variables as input for the prompt. So if you recall, in the game, we selected the game parameter for the theme earlier as user input, right? So once that has been selected, it will take in this variable as input from user selection into this AI task prompt, as you can see here highlighted. And of course, the result that we get back from the AI would then be the story that is generated here. Below, we also have some other settings for you to easily configure for your AI task. We have some AI settings. We first have the model that you can select for your Gen AI. And aside from that, we also have temperature. Perhaps if you want your output to be more precise, you can set a lower value. And if you want your output to be more creative, you can set a higher value. And then we also have stop words, token limit, 
timeout, etc. So any other customized parameters can also be configured here depending on your needs as well. So you can just simply add in additional parameters they require. Alright, so that is the first task, the first task for the AI task that we are highlighting. And once that has been done, we will then move on to the next task of the workflow, which is to pass the generated story. And you can see from the logo here, this is done through a JavaScript task. So what exactly is a JavaScript task? Essentially, it is for you to design your differing types of logic in your business flow for your applications. So in this case, we have passed the story data into variables so that it can be displayed on the screen later on or even we are using it or even to be used as input for future, future AI tasks in your workflow, which I will share more on in later steps. All right, so that is the JavaScript task. Once that is passed through in your workflow, we will move on to the user task to show the generated story to be displayed on the screens for users to see when they are using the application. And after which, we will then persist the story and answer through a JDBC task. So JDBC tasks are used for you to insert your records or retrieve your data from the database very easily. So you can think of your database operations such as your insert statements, your update statements and your select statements. So in this case, what we are doing is that we are storing the story and the answer to the database where we just simply write the SQL insert statement over here to store and uh, input this data into your database. So you can see that there's no need to write any backend code, we just simply add in the prepared statement into this section here. After which we will then generate the question set for the users. And again, this is done through another AI task. So you can see from the color codes here, the AI tasks are represented in blue as well. So it's easy for you to decipher what task this is. So this AI task is a little different from the previous one. You can see here we have this variable which is called past story. This past story variable is used as input for this current AI task. And actually this is the output generated from the previous AI task where we asked the AI to generate the story for us. So we actually what we did is that we map this input to the prompt variable and the result is asking for the AI to return us a set of yes or no questions generated for the users to select as you have seen just now. So you may wonder why do we need this past story variable? This is to give the AI context so that it generates all the questions at one go based on the same story earlier. And you may also wonder why can't we just generate both the story and this question set together in one AI task? Well, the reason is because we want the result that we get to be more focused since the AI task prompt is more precise and more focused. Similarly, this is also one of the prompt engineering strategies that we have shared. So we are actually incorporating prompt chaining into your AI task, also known as LLM chaining, where we simply split complex tasks into simpler subtasks. So if you ask too many things in one prompt, it might actually be harder for you to get the result that you want. So you can see how you can easily apply your prompt engineering strategies using our workflow and can then make your output as variable to even be accessible for future tasks to use. All right, after which we will then move on to pass the question sets through another, JD, uh, sorry, another JavaScript task, and then we will save and update all the questions generated into the database through another JDBC task. Moving on, we will then move on for the users to select from the set of questions that we have in place. So what this will do, what this task will do will be that we will generate uh, one question set at a time for the users to select. And once that is done, we will then generate the answer from the selected prompt. So this is also represented with another AI task. And once again, it will take into account the context of the story by taking the past story as input variable again. And it will then reply a yes or no answer to the question as selected by the user as you can see in this variable. So the answer to the question will then be passed and displayed on the screen for the user to see. So you can see there's this loop here. The users will go through a few rounds of the question selection before finally reaching the last stage of the game, which is to guess the murderer. So once we have taken our guess, we will finally reveal the murderer and this is being done via an AI task once again. So now in this case, we are asking the AI to give us a structured result of both the name of the murderer as well as the motive, the reason behind the story plot. 
So essentially that wraps up our workflow designer portion. We have went through the entire flow of the game application where you have seen how you can use this workflow tool to design your workflow really easily just through configurations. And by the way, the application build is all running on cloud, further highlighting the cloud native nature that Kaizen provides. So now that we all know what Kaizen can do in designing your business logic for your applications through our workflow, what if there are errors that arise from your system, your applications? Fact not because Kaizen here provides you observability of your workflow process instances. So what do I mean by this? Traditionally, you will need to you know, check through your log files to troubleshoot and find out where the error in your system stems from. But now with Kaizen, we provide you mechanisms for you to monitor the status, monitor the progress of running instances of your application. Now we are navigating, we will navigate over to the workflow instance page. So in the workflow instance page, you will be able to see that each instance in the instance listing may be running at different stages of the workflow. In our case, starting the game for the Silent Sleuth application will trigger the start of an instance of the workflow. So now let's start a new game and step through it briefly just to show you how we can make use of this feature to monitor your application instances live. So let's input some of the game parameters and select the difficulty as well as the setting. All right, so now we are starting the game. And since we have done that, we will click on the first instance in our console for the first instance that is running for our application. Let's zoom in to take a look. As you can see, firstly, you are greeted with this visual representation of the workflow instance, similar to what we have just seen, what we have just shared. But here is different because you can see the color-coded task, which actually represents the status of each of your tasks. So you can see here on uh, for your generate story tasks as well as your past generated story tasks. These two tasks are represented in green, meaning that this task has been successfully completed. As seen on the left, it, it makes sense as in sync with your application because what we see on the mobile view here is that the story has been generated for us to see and that tallies with your workflow instance. We also have yellow color coded tasks, meaning that this is the task that we are currently at. It's currently running and the user has perhaps yet to complete their task. We also have other color codes as well, uh, not shown here yet. We have red color codes to represent tasks with errors encountered, and we also have purple color coded tasks, meaning that that particular task has executed more than once. So we will show you this later on. All right, let's now click on the generate story AI task. You can see on this workflow instance view, you can also see the variables before and variables after uh, after the task has been executed. So you can see we have color codes represented here as well. So on the right side, you can see that these variables are represented in green, meaning that they are newly added variables. We also have other color codes for this as well, whereby red will mean that the variables are removed and orange will mean that the variables have changed. So the users can easily verify if the task inputs were provided correctly and additionally also verify that the task outputs are returned correctly to ensure that it is returning the output as expected. All right, then going back to the workflow, this, also, this green color codes also show you the user decision path from these color codes. So the path that the particular instance has taken as has flowed through. All right, now we will click through the application on the left that's running to progress to the next steps of the workflow, which is to show the questions generated so that we can see the workflow being updated live on the right instance. All right, we'll step through the questions a few times. Okay, so once we have stepped through the questions a few times, if we take a look at the workflow instance again, Immediately, you can see that all these tasks, the entire flow have been updated in different color codes as we look through the game session instance. So what this does is that it allows you to easily monitor and easily zoom in to say a particular step in the workflow to troubleshoot and you can even fix the problem quickly just from looking at the color code of these tasks. 
So you can see over here, uh, these tasks for the question sets that we have went through are represented in purple because of course we have went through the uh, question sets two times as you can see from the text denoted on top of the task as well. So you can see that these purple color codes would mean that it has executed more than once. On top of this feature, we have another useful tool that we provide here as well in the timeline tab below. So aside from this graphical visual view of your workflow instances, this timeline view shows you the timeline of each step in your workflow, which displays the task execution timeline view in chronological order. So you can see how long it took to complete or run through a different task based on this timeline view. So from here, if you hover at a particular uh, timeline, you can see that the time taken, taken for that particular task, when it started as well as when it ended. So from here, you can also identify which task, uh, perhaps taking a longer time to run or running a bit slowly as expected. And of course, in this case, user tasks will take longer to run because uh, you, they might take more time for action as well. So you have seen how you can monitor the progress of your workflow instances. And as highlighted, everything that you built is being monitored on Kaizen, giving you further intelligence to know whether your applications are running smoothly or having problems when they are being uh, deployed. Okay, so through Kaizen's workflow and business observability, it allows you to achieve a few things. So firstly, we have over here is that it helps you to construct and automate business processes. It allows you to automate complex business processes easily by integrating with microservices, APIs, AI models, and even human tasks for your application business logics. On top of that, secondly, is that it helps you to harness the power of Gen AI through configurations. So you have seen how Kaizen has built-in integration with Gen AI, and traditionally you need to do manual coding in order to integrate with perhaps your relevant APIs and your AI models. But now with Kaizen, you can just easily integrate with your Gen AI model via your configurations in our workflow elements. And similarly, you can apply dynamic prompts and LLM chaining instead of manually handling them in your code. So what this does is that it allows you to build your applications and integrate with your Gen AI models easily and solves the last mile problem. Last but not least, as you have just seen, is that Kaizen allows you to observe your business processes in action. It provides you observability of your individual workflow and process instances. And of course, this is a pivotal uh, component of our observability framework to allow you to gain comprehensive insights onto your system's performance and also to identify any bottlenecks or pinpoint any issues and overall helping you to improve your operational efficiency. All right, with that, Kaizen's workflow and business observability, these are the things that we can help you to achieve. So we wanted to make this segment a little more fun and engaging to showcase Kaizen by building this murder mystery game application that uses Gen AI heavily. And of course, it's easier to understand for everyone. But of course, Kaizen definitely supports capabilities in building larger scale enterprise systems as well on top of this application that we have just demoed to you. So I hope that this segment has been insightful in showing you how you can build a Gen AI powered application using Kaizen's workflow and business observability. This tool helps you to simplify your creation and visualization of dynamic process driven applications and offers you flexibility and automation tailored to your unique business needs. If Kaizen has caught your interest, remember that you have only just seen one of the many powerful features that we offer. So we also have many other features such as our application designer for you to design your screens easily without writing any front-end code. So feel free to reach out to us anytime and we'll be happy to arrange a full demo session tailored to your needs.